In this new tutorial, we are going to see how to use two new features of the DeepFace Lab fork of Machine Video Editor. The two new features are AutoGen Conf, which allows you to use the configuration file to load the training settings. And the second one is the customization on the package names of the face sets to be used. First, we open one of the pad to start the training. And as we can see, within this pad, there are some arguments that will be input to DFL. Some of these are where to get the training data for the source, where to get the training data for the destination, where to get the training data for the pre-training, the name of the model, and in this case, also autogen config, that is the parameter that allows you to read the training settings on the model from a configuration file that will be unique for each model and inside the workspace model folder. So, let's try this pet file. For this example, I will create a new model. Now it will ask us if we want to read our training options from the configuration file and we choose yes. Now it will tell us that the configuration file does not exist, which is true because inside our workspace model folder our new two model does not exist. So the standard options selection method will be used. And now the trainer will start normally. Ok, our training is starting normally and created files inside our workspace model folder. Now let's try to close the training and start it again. First, it asks us if we want to use the configuration file, if we want to load options from there. But first, let's see if the file exists at all. So we go to workspace model and see that both the model files and the respective configuration file now exist. As you can see, here are all the training settings. The first settings are the model resolution and the size of the autoencoder, decoder and mask decoder. These settings are editable, but it's not recommended doing this once the model is created, if you don't know what you're doing. While all other settings are freely editable, an added value of using the configuration file is also to be able to deepen some values of the random shadows augmentation option. While those who will use DFL without configuration file will only be able to choose whether to enable it or not and whether to apply it only to the source, only to the destination or to both. It now informs us that it's using the configuration file at this location. Next, it asks if we want to reset the number of iterations and the loss graph. This is also a new function of the AMV fork of DFL, but it's very simple and requires no further explanation. This function is very useful for those who want to continue training with a model already used. By default, the choice is negative. Now the trainer will not tell us to press enter within 2 seconds to override the settings because it has already read the options from the configuration file. To show you that everything works, let's reopen the configuration file and disable uniform yaw. When we reopen our training, the face set shouldn't be uniformed by yaw.
Now we are going to look at a new feature, namely custom names for dataset packages. Currently, by DFL's default behavior, our packaged facets are all called face set pack. Now we are going to modify them and call them actor pack for the destination and president pack for the source. We can now open our own bat and give it these names as input using these two new arguments. The first specifies the pack name for the source dataset and the second for the target dataset. There is no need to specify the file extension. No training data provided. Yes, this is an error. But why? The reason is that when we use autogen file, DFL will use the custom file names packed inside the configuration file. In fact, at the end of our file, there are two tries to specify the names. Let's try opening the trainer again. As you can see, it found the file names in the configuration file. Thanks to these two new features of DFL's Mesh Video Editor fork, we can now organize our workspace in a completely different and much more efficient way. Below, I will show you an example of how this can be organized. First, we create a new folder in Workspace and call it, for example, Face Sets. Then we go into the Aligned folders and cut the files of our face sets to put them inside the face sets folder. Now let's go edit any of the pet files to open the trainer and as you can see the first two arguments are the paths where a DFL should go to read the datasets, whether they are bulk images or packed datasets. Currently DFL takes the source face set from one folder and the destination face set from another. What we need to do is to go and change the path of these two face sets to the path of a new folder we have created. Now we go to our configuration file and change the name of the packaged files we are interested in. Now let's see how to start training in source-to-source -source mode. To do this, let's edit the pet file that we usually use to start training with AMP model and to toe on a single face set. As a first difference, compared to the previous bat file, we can see that both arguments for the datasets point to the same folder. However, this behavior conflicts with our new workflow if we forget to change the names of the face sets to be read. For now, let's modify the paths first. Now let's open the trainer to create a new example AMP model. Now it has given us this error because as the model is new, the default configuration file created has face set as its default name and none of the files we have inside our path are named that way. So we close DFL and go to edit the configuration file for our new model. Remember that it is necessary to set both values with the same name. As you can see, the training started with just one set, both as source and destination.